Hey everybody, Last Right Outrider here. Let's get right back into the story again. We were talking about the true names of Grey Knights and why it should be their histories are the first thing that's scrubbed from their heads. <clears throat> so it says... From these pieces of lore, the Grey Knights bestow names... To their new recruits, each one is a carefully chosen title fashioned into a weapon. That's what they said before. Okay? They enter the citadel not as warriors that they once were, but as refined materials the chapter will use to create new battle brothers. Now, this is interesting. And I'm, I'm going to give you a unique interpretation of gray knight recruitment that might twist a few nipples now some people now from before we have the one in a million and that would be the raw recruits that are coming into the gray knights <clears throat> but since we know that the gray knights are not an asharte chapter their recruitment can be entirely different has it ever been considered that the gray knights can recruit current space marines from other chapters. You know, it says that the recruiting for the Grey Knights has no limits. Now, we know for a normal start, they recruit, and you start with, you know, kids, boys from between 8 to 13, and then they go through genetic implantation. But what if, what if, the, what if the Grey Knights could induct somebody into the ranks who's already like a senior librarian or something like that in another chapter this could be possible because this is how i interpret this paragraph listen to what it says for this reason when a gray knight is recruited his name is one of the first things scrubbed from his mind along with much of his past now, like I said, there, if it's an 8- to 13-year-old boy, it's not, not too much freaking past to be scrubbed. So this is leading me to believe there's more going on here than just that, than the normal Astarte recruiting. Okay? Along with, uh, by the time the hulking transporters set down on the frozen surface of Titan, the men, not boys, men within, have forgotten much of their lives. They enter the citadel, not as warriors that they once were, again, indicating probably not a boy, not as the warriors they once were, but as the refined materials the chapter will use to create new battle brothers. Now, I think that's interesting because you can play lots of fluff games with this. If the Grey Knights may find, oh, look, there's a Dark Angel librarian something like that who has they detected would have is what is one of the one in the million who could become a gray knight they will take him and recruit him first step wipe ever his entire past he is no longer the warrior he loses all of his battle skills even everything erased gone tabula rasa and then they train him again to become a Grey Knight, never even having known that he was a member of another Astarte chapter. I would write a short story like that. That right there, I could imagine as a whole plot line and beginning, something we could read that's better than the Aaron, the the emperor's gift i'm sorry aaron but that little finrisian inquisitor just <sighs> she and i don't don't get along <clears throat> other than that it's a fantastic fantastic book although this undisciplined gray knight that seemed a loose cannon uh, seems like a, a far-fetched idea, but this idea, this is workable. 
the idea of a librarian, some senior librarian from the other chapters, maybe five of them have been taken together and recruited and they get to know each other. And then suddenly the first stage of, of Grey Knight training, your entire past, your name, everything, all your skills, your whole life is wiped from your head. And then they're reintroduced again as a team of five. Basically reborn into the world and then begin Grey Knight training then. And that could be the story of an entire squad right then and there. The before and after. It was just so cool. That I would like to read. Take note of that. Okay. <clears throat> so, during the long days and months of training, these men have no names. Only the designation given to them by the chapter. Those that fall are buried in unmarked graves, if they're buried at all. The tiny fraction of recruits that survive the grueling trials on Titan and the process of genetic implantation are finally gifted with new names. So, like I said, it's, it mentions the grueling trials on Titan and the, and the implantation, but like I said... Either the people writing this fluff have no concept of of how Astartes is, is selected, or they know something you don't know. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the Grey Knights are capable of recruiting other Astartes and wiping their past. And there's precedent for this before you think that's crazy. Because the Grey Knight chapter itself doesn't have a gene seed. The Grey Knight, the first eight Grand Masters were from eight other Astarte traitor, uh, traitor and loyalist legions. So what if the Grey Knights still recruit other people from other legions. I mean, like I said, all of the original Grey Knights were originally from another legion. There was nobody who just started, hey, uh, from the beginning and became a Grey Knight like all the other legions. That's something unique about them. So what if they just keep that tradition going? They accept in others. I think that would work, especially from the eight... Um, or whatever remaining chapters uh, that the that the eight original grandmasters were from, they probably would have you know some affinity to that. I mean, the, the recruits had their mind wipes, but maybe the grandmasters themselves have a secret, secret, secret to know that the original grandmaster of their brotherhood was from the Death Guard or the Lunar Wolves. Because think about this. What would be the greatest test of loyalty for an Astarte to show the Emperor? Hmm? What would it be? I'll give you a few more seconds to ponder it. Okay, I'll tell you. It would be to disobey his Primarch. Because... He's loyal to the emperor. I think that's the greatest test and start as start he could go through. The Primarch says, turn against the emperor, and he looks up and says, I can't do that. That's somebody who could become a great knight. And I believe that's one of the still recruitment processes that they look at the Astartes out there and they select them for that reason. This is just my theory. Okay, it would still be a good, it would still be a good story if they elaborate on it. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm sorry. We're gonna go on and work on to the next one next time. We'll keep going into this. We got pages more. See you then. Bye.